and welcome to Aviation 101 with Laura. Have you ever been looking at a Jefferson chart and noticed something toward the top of the chart that you don't see on FAA type charts? Well, let's take a look at what that is. This is the line I'm talking about. It's in Jefferson's briefing strip and it talks about altimeter setting inches, trans level, flow 180, trans altitude, 18,000 feet. Now, if you only fly in the US, you might not even notice that part of the chart. In fact, you might not even know what it means. It's not in the FAA chart. I've got the same chart for both the same airport here, but it's not on the FAA chart. So why is it not on the FAA chart, but it is on a Jefferson chart? And what does it even mean? We're gonna talk about that today, plus a bonus story of why altimeter settings really matter. When you're flying internationally, sometimes even more, than when you're flying in the US. So that trans level, um, trans altitude, what does that even mean? Well, we want to establish a boundary layer or like a separation zone between aircraft using what we call true altitude. We sometimes think of it as the height above sea level and those that are using the altimeter settings that give them a pressure altitude. So if we go back to this chart, in the United States, you set your altimeter to pressure altitude, 29.92 is our standard setting in the US inches of mercury, and we set it at 18,000 feet. So that means in the US, our transition altitude or our transition layer is at 18,000 feet. During a climb, that's where you change your altimeter to 2992. When you go down, you're gonna get a local altimeter setting from ATC, something close to where you're flying, hopefully. And then you're going to update your altimeter setting to the local setting as you go down below 18,000 feet, which is my true altitude, sometimes called QNH for international applications. Okay, so that's my transition altitude. And in the US, we don't even think about it. We just say, oh, okay, we just switch at 18,000 feet. But, but what about this airport? This is in Singapore. We have an ILS approach. We have a Jeppesen briefing strip again. And I wanna point out some interesting things that you can notice that are significantly different from the one we looked at in the US. First of all, the altimeter setting says it's in hectopascals. Interesting, okay. Also gives our airport elevator or our runway elevation in hectopascals. <laughs> okay, um, the uh, trans, transition level here is at flight level 130. Okay, and the transition altitude is at 11,000 feet. So it's not the same. It's not like in the US where it's just both of those say 18,000 feet, essentially. It's not the same. So on this chart, we see the transition altitude at 11,000 feet, much lower than we're used to in the US. What that means is climbing through 11,000 feet, I am going to switch my altimeter setting to the standard setting, okay? And this says that they're using hectopascals. So then we would have to set our standard setting. Now, in the US, we're used to inches of mercury, so that's 2992, but 1013.2 millibars is equivalent of 1013.2 hectopascals. So as you're climbing through 11,000 feet departing Singapore, you would set 1013.2 hectopascals in your altimeter. What is trans level then? Because it's a different number here. That is the lowest altitude where you can cruise using the standard altimeter setting. So in this case, again, we, are, we would be using the standard of 1013.2 hectopascals. Using that set in my altimeter, I could cruise as low as flight level 13, 130. So in the US, our transition layer is all right at 18,000 feet. But here in Singapore, we would see that that transition layer is between 11,000 and 13,000 feet. So there's a bit of a gap where we have a bit of a buffer, if you will, for aircraft that are in the flight levels versus not in the flight levels. Let's look at this example from Russia. And these are old charts, so this is definitely, it may have changed. I just have old charts because it works. On this chart, we can see the transition altitude 
super low, only 3,600 feet, much lower than 18,000 feet that you're used to in the U.S. But this means, again, climbing through 3,600 feet, you are going to switch to using the standard altimeter setting. But we have to, again, look what is the standard altimeter setting. And at the time this chart was printed for Moscow, it was millimeters. So then I would need is at 760 millimeters. That would be my standard that I would switch climbing through 3,600 feet. But we also see something interesting here that the transition level, it says by ATC. So what does that mean? Transition level by ATC means ATC should broadcast this typically on ATIS. Yeah. You would have to know what that was per ATIS. So interesting. And that is what that means. Notice again, it's much different than the US. Okay, why do I care about any of this? Well, let's look at a near accident. This is NASA reporting, Aviation Safety Reporting System report number is shown. You can look it up on their website. I'll link to it in the description. But this occurred in July of 1989. It was a three-engine DC-10. Not, I don't know what airline it was. It's all de-identified. No idea. Um, but they were on pretty long duty day going into Copenhagen, flying a VOR DME approach. Weather was poor. Visibility was bad. They were in the clouds. It was instrument meteorological conditions. And as they neared their minimum descent altitude captain called out 1,000. The second officer, so we're talking about like a flight engineer here back then with flight engineers on a, this aircraft, he called out 300 radar altimeter go around. The, the, the captain listened, executed go around, doesn't miss approach. Okay, and they're like, well, that's weird. What happened? Why did the radar altimeter have 300 only showing if we were still 1,000 feet above my minimum descent altitude? Thankfully, the second officer called it out because it was Something was wrong, and that's why he called it out. But how did that even happen? Well, when they dug into this further, the crew spoke to ATC and said, like, what's the altimeter setting? Um, they thought that it was given as 991. They assumed somehow that that meant 29.91 inches of mercury, but ATC had given them 991 in inches or sorry, not in inches of mercury, but in millibars. So let's take a look at the view at the missed approach. If they if their altimeter showed 800 feet with an altimeter setting of 29.91 inches of mercury, that's, that's what they would have seen. However, if they had correctly set it, this was an abnormally low atmospheric pressure. It's definitely quite low, poor weather, low pressure. If they had set 991 millibars instead of 800 feet at the missed approach, they would have only seen 160 feet. They estimated that they came within a few feet of hitting the water on the approach. And thankfully, it was an approach that somehow involved going over the water. So they did not hit anything, but they turned out to be about 640 feet lower than they thought they were at. They had set the wrong altimeter. Instead of setting 991 millibars, they assumed 991 meant to 9.91 inches. And so and they retired. It was a long duty day. Um, but yes, that is why we're checking the units. That's why we're looking at what is ATC giving us the units in because we don't want to make erroneous assumptions that it's all in inches of mercury. And if you look back at your FAA chart, it doesn't say anything about that. Why? Because we don't even use FAA charts outside the United States. So why would they print it? altimeter setting or a transition level or a transition altitude. They don't need to. Jeppesen is by far accepted and used around the world. So they have all this information and we get our altimeter setting, trans level and trans altitude. So I hope you learned something interesting about altimeter settings and what is this line on the Jeppesen chart that we so often ignore in the US, but becomes a big deal when we fly internationally. If you like this, subscribe to Aviation 101 with Laura. 